All right, hello there. Um, sorry I'm not here today. Had to go take Charlotte to uh, her checkup. So while I'm gone, um, I'm going to have you guys do your notes. Okay, this is going to be the beginning of our next unit. Um, and it's over polygons and the sum of their angles. So first thing, uh, definition of a polygon, it's a closed figure formed by coplanar segments where um, <clears throat> sides that have a common endpoint are all uh, non-collinear. So basically there's no overlapping sides. Okay, and each side intersects exactly two other sides, but only at their endpoints. So their sides don't cross. So over here we have not a polygon. Okay, this one, it we got four uh, segments meeting right here. So the sides are crossing, so that makes it not a polygon. <clears throat> but over here, all of these, um, you know, each side connects at the ends. Okay, nothing's crossing over each other, so that's why those are polygons. And you can name them. Um, generally, it's going uh, clockwise, okay? And it doesn't matter, like, which letter you start at. But you can also go counterclockwise, but the uh, standard is clockwise. So over here, I could name this one G H I J K because I'm going around and naming the corners. All right, now we have two different kinds of polygons. We have convex polygons. So I like to say these are um, like spiky, okay? Spiky polygons. So um, no line containing a side of the polygon extends into the interior. So basically none of the sides are poking back in. <clears throat> and it doesn't have any diagonal with points outside the polygon. So here, a diagonal is going from corner to corner, um, as long as those two corners are not right next to each other. So all these diagonals, they're all inside the polygon. And so A, B, C, D, E, F up here is a, a convex polygon. Okay, and then concave. Uh, I like to say these look like they are caved in. Okay, um, they don't meet the definition of convex. Okay, and it has at least one diagonal with points outside of the polygon. So here, um, this diagonal MW, it's outside that polygon. And so basically, like, if you can draw a little cave, then it's a concave polygon. Okay, naming polygons. Um, they're named based on the number of sides. So 3 to 12, they have names. So 3 sided 1, we all know that. It's a triangle. Four-sided is quadrilateral. The five-sided one is a pentagon. Six-sided is hexagon. A seven-sided is a heptagon. H-E-P-T-A-G-O-N. Eight-sided we know is an octagon. Okay, nine-sided is called a nonagon. Okay, ten is a decagon. So like decade. Eleven-sided is a hindagon. So D. Okay, and twelve-sided is dodecagon. D-O-D-E-C-A-G-O-N. Okay, and um, a vocabulary tip, a diagonal is a segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices. So that means they're not, uh, non-consecutive means they're not one right after the other. So like up here in our picture, um, M, K, those are consecutive because it's M and then K. But M, W, you have to skip over point K there, so that's why they're non-consecutive. Okay, so now the uh, theorem about the interior angle sum. So when you have polygons, you have angles on the inside. Okay, so that's the corners on the inside. And there's a formula to figure out how much the sum of all their angles are. And it's um, N minus 2 
<clears throat> times 180, where n is your number of sides. Okay, and this is for the total, total or sum of all the angles. So example, find the sum of the interior angles of a nonagon. Okay, so nonagon means n is 9. So we just plug into our formula. 9 minus 2, because 9 is n. Okay, 9 minus 2 times 180. So 9 minus 2, well that's 7. And then multiply that by 180, and you get 1,260. So if you took a nonagon and you added up all the angles inside of it, you would get 1,260. Okay, example, find the value of y. All right, we have our um, <clears throat> polygon here, Texas, if you notice, T-E-X-A-S. Um, and we have to solve an equation for this. So step one, we have to figure out what all these angles should actually add up to. So you have to do, we count one, two, three, four, five. It's got five sides. So we have to do this uh, total formula first. So we do five minus two times 180. And we get 540. So if I take all five of these angles and add them up, they should be equal to 540. So this is step two. So we have 120 plus, and I'm going to start up here at E, and I'm going to go clockwise, 2y minus 5 plus 2y plus another 2y plus 3y minus 25, and that should equal to 540 because it's a pentagon. Okay, now just combine like terms. So 2y and another 2y, that's 4y. Okay, plus another 2y, that's 6. Plus 3, well, that's 9. So you have 9y. Okay, and then now we'll just combine our constants. We have 120 minus 5 and minus 25. So 120 minus 5 minus 25, that gives me 90. So 9y plus 90 is equal to 540. Okay, just take away 90, so you get 9y is equal to 450, and divide that by 9, and so you'll get that y is equal to 50. So whenever you have to write the equations, you have to do step 1 of actually plugging in the total formula and finding out what they all should add up to. <clears throat> Alright, next example. A convex polygon with 1,800... Uh, degrees, the interior angle sum, has how many sides? Okay, so basically they've done n minus 2 times 180, and it came out to be 1,800. So now we have to, you know, solve the formula backwards to get n. So we have to get rid of the stuff on the outside here, so divide by 180. So n minus 2 and if you do 1,800 divided by 180, you get 10. And then just add 2. So n is 12. Okay, so that's interior angles. Okay, now we're going to go and we're going to look at exterior angles. Okay? So whenever you have the exterior angles on any polygon, okay, um, they're going to always add up to 360. That's just what you got to know. So all the angles on the exterior of a polygon add up to 360. And the exterior angles are these guys here. Um, it's like if you extend the side of the polygon, and it's the angle between the extended side and the regular side of the polygon. So here we have B plus 68 plus 84, plus the 60, plus, now be careful, the 140 is on the inside, but we can see it's making the straight line here, so it would add up to 180, so 180 minus 140 means this is going to be 40, so plus 40, and if you add up all of these exterior angles, they need to add up and equal to 360. 
So B plus, and then let's add 68 plus 84 and 60 and 40. Well, that adds up to 252. Okay. And so then just subtract. And so you get B is 108. Okay, over here, um, we have to find this measure of A. Okay, and we can see that there are three of them that are marked that. Because they all have the arc with the tick mark on them. So there's three angles that are the same size. So 3A plus, and now we got 43, okay, plus. Okay, over here, the 68, that's on the inside. So I have to do 180 minus the 68. Okay, so 180 minus 68, and that's 112. So that's 112 right there, okay plus 69, and again, they're exterior angles, so they should all add up to 360, no matter what polygon you have. So we have 3A plus, we have 43 plus 112 plus 69, that's 224. Okay, so 360 minus 224 get 136. So 3a is equal to 136. And divide that by 3. And you'll get a is 45.3 repeating. So there we go. So yes, it is okay to get a decimal. All right. Um, next bit of information here is called a regular polygon. Okay. A regular polygon is an equilateral polygon and also an equiangular polygon. So that means all the sides are congruent, that's equilateral, and all of the angles are congruent, that's equiangular. So that's what a regular polygon is. All sides congruent and all your angles congruent. So to find the measure of each angle, so this is like if I want to know just one of the regular polygon, um, you have to take the total and you divide it by the number of sides. So how these formulas look, okay, for exterior, well, remember the total for exterior is 360. We'll just divide that by N, and that will give you one exterior angle. Okay, and then interior, well, remember the total is N minus 2 times 180. We'll just divide that by N, and that will give you the measure of one interior. Okay, and if you'll notice down here um, in the bottom of each box, they have 180 minus the interior angle is equal to exterior, or 180 minus the exterior is equal to the interior, and that's because um, one interior plus the exterior, they have to add up to 180, because they're going to make a straight line. So example, find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular dodecagon. Okay, so dodecagon means n is 12. Okay, so we need to find the measure of each exterior angle, so we're going to take 360 and divide it by 12. And so, if you take 360 divided by 12, you're going to get 30. So, on a dodecagon, each exterior angle is 30 degrees. Okay, next one. If each interior angle of a regular polygon is 157.5 degrees, how many sides does it have? Okay, so they're telling us one interior polygon angle is 157.5. So now we're going to have to solve for n. So start over here to the left. So we have 157.5. That's one interior angle. So see, each interior angle is equal to n minus 2 times 180 divide by n. Okay, so now we're going to solve this for n. So first step is to get this n out of the bottom so we don't have a fraction anymore. So we're going to multiply both sides by n. So over here, they'll cancel. 
So I'm going to get 157.5n is equal to n minus 2 times 180. Okay, I still can't just move the n over here because I'm multiplying by 180. So now I'm going to distribute the 180 in. So 157.5n is equal to 180n minus, and then 180 times 2 is 360, so minus 360. Okay, all I'm going to do now is move this 180 over here. I'm going to subtract 180, 180 in, okay, from both sides. So if you do 157.5 minus 180, you're going to get negative 22.5, and that's n, is equal to, over here, negative 360. Okay, I'm not worried about the negatives because they're going to divide out. So now I'll just take um, 360 and divide it by 22.5, and you will get that n equals 16. So y'all need to get familiar with solving formulas for different variables. All right, next one. The measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is given. So this is the exterior. Find the number of sides of the polygon. So let's look up here. Each exterior angle is equal to 360 divided by n. So 30 is equal to 360 divided by n. Okay, we need to solve for n. So I'm going to multiply by n on both sides. Okay, so I have 30n is equal to 360. Well, divide by 30, divide by 30. So n, okay, 360 divided by 30. We should know that already. It's going to be 12. So essentially, all you ended up doing was taking 360 and dividing it by 30. Okay. So let's do the last one. Again, we'll just use our shortcut here. We'll take 360 because that's what they all add up to. And if each one is 8 degrees, that's going to tell us how many of them there are. So 360 divided by 8, that means there are 45 sides. Okay, so um, that's what we're going to do for the notes. So let's go ahead. We're going to look. Um, we're going to look at our assignments. Okay, so go to the one that looks like this at the top. <clears throat> it's a 6.1 sums of polygon angles. Okay, um, I have circled the numbers that I want you to do. I want you to do 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8. There's a hint on number 8. You're going to use angle 4 to help you figure out angles 1 and angle 2. Okay, those three angles are related to each other. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 11, and 13. And then down here, 15 and 16. And then 17 and 18. Okay, so 15, 16, 17, 18, and 13 and 11. And from the top page, it's 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8. Okay, and then the next assignment there, we're going to do 1, 3, 5, so 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8, okay, 11, and 14, fifteen and 16, and then 19 and 20. And then there's a challenge problem down here that you can do. That would be some bonus points. Okay, so 19 and 20, 15 and 16, 14, 11, 7 and 8, 
and then 1, 3, and 5. Okay, and if you are not sure which problems I'm asking you to do, I will post these on Canvas with the ones that I want you to do circled. All right, so y'all get to work, and I will see you guys tomorrow.